Howdy y'all! Today, we're going to finish what we started last week because we've got to put some gears back together in the 489 case for Duddy's 69 Dodge Dart. First off, we need to get pinion bearing removed here because we've got some fresh pinion bearings to go on. And then we got to hit the pressure washer because, quite frankly, this stuff is disgusting, as I said last week. Been sitting in a barn and then in a trunk and um, we can't put it together like this. So, let's uh, get a pinion bearing pull. We'll get some stuff cleaned up and we'll begin the reassembly process. All right, guys, first order of business. So we've got to get this pinion bearing off. Uh, we've got a pretty fancy tool for that. It's um, a clamshell bearing puller. There's lots of other pullers out there that can do this, press, a little extra work, but this one works pretty well. And uh, hopefully it'll actually do our job here. But first off, we're going to get this little guy down on there, I believe. adjustments here so we can get this under the bearing hopefully maybe uh, let's see all right something like that and this is either gonna work or it's just gonna rip the Cage right off of it. But it's a really straightforward kind of thing here. Should pull it right off. So let's see if we get lucky. It worked. Nice. Oh, all right. Oh, and it still smells. We've got to get this stuff clean. Every time you crack open another piece of this sucker, it's just disgusting. And as you can see, one bearing removed. No damage. Uh, we do need to take our shim here. We're going to save that. And as long as it's in good shape, which looks like it is, that will be reused. Uh, we do have a install kit here, guys, from Dr. Diff. Uh, it does come with some new shims. If you're setting up a brand new gear set, you probably ought to use the new shims and you'll have to take some stuff apart a few times. But um, in our case, since we're reusing these gears in the same housing, this, um, this should get us in the ballpark. So let's get out to the wash pad because this stuff is nasty and we can't put it together like this. Parts are clean and you know, this gear set has seen some better days. Uh, we're not going for perfection here, per se. We're mostly just going for something that will work. And there's no chunks or pitting in any of this stuff. It's pretty good, cleaned up nice, it's all shiny. It's definitely worn out, but it's a race car, right? Loose is fast. So, first thing I like to do is get some bearings installed. Um, so, there's a couple ways you can do this. Here's our new large pinion bearing and here is uh, the uh, installer we're going to use. So reason for this installer is that whenever you go to press this down on this pinion you need something to sit on top of it so that it will go all the way down without this part getting stuck and uh, makes it a little easier you know, that easily fits over that now, the reason you want to do that is you don't want to mess up the bearing cage right there. Um, very important. Don't mess up your bearings. They're expensive and they take a week to get here. So, we're going to get that little guy on there. We're going to put that little guy right there. We do already have our shim cleaned up uh, that we removed earlier. Ready to go on. Um, and we're going to head on over to the press 
get that bearing installed. Alrighty folks, we are set up in the press. As you can see, we've got our press blocks in there. We've got our bearing and our shim and we've got our pressing tool. That's all gonna go together something like that. Right, drop it in the hole. Uh, it is a very good idea to go ahead and give her some lubrication. All right, if you make a mess, the more the merrier. And we'll get that centered up and send it home. She's got pinion bearing installed just like that. All right, let's move on to step two. Next up, we need to get our carrier bearings installed. Duddy has gone with one of these lightweight spools because, well, as you all saw, the sure grip was trash. And so we get that little guy in our press just like so. And our bearing is going to be right there going on. We've done the same thing by creating a special tool out of an old bearing that allows it to press on without getting hung up. And uh, you can do that with just a flap disc on a grinding wheel or carbide bit. There's, it takes a few minutes, but makes it go nice and smooth. So, again, we're going to get some lubrication, make as much as mess as possible, that's important, make sure you definitely you know, have lots of spider webs and crap in the way, and set that guy there, and we get our pressing tool, a little block here to drive everything home, and we'll get it leveled out more or less, centered, and see what happens. Here we go. Oh yeah, like butter. Right, and that's it. Now basically we're gonna repeat the process on the other side of the carrier and then we can get to Installing some guts, I think. Get some bearing races installed in the case. There it is. Carrier bearings installed. Now that we've got bearings installed on the carrier, we can insert it into our handy dandy broken axle shaft 9000 holder tool and well let's just say that was part of a front day in 60 that didn't make it so uh, we need to go ahead and get this right up on here like so and, and we can get our ring gear and ideally get our holes lined up reasonably well get it kind of started and remember guys left hand threads here okay Loctite time just a a little dab will do you on each bolt. And we'll work our way around. Whew. 
All righty. That ain't going nowhere. All right, guys, we're going to start with the inner pinion bearing race first. We've got a nice shiny new one. Make sure you put it in the right way. And same thing as we did earlier. We are going to lubricate everything very well so it just slides right on in there. And we have made absolutely sure that there's no dirt debris in here. So we just lay that little guy in there. And we have our installer. And looks like that'll probably do it. But let's go ahead and make our lives a little easier. We can extend this little guy. I do prefer to do this on the ground as otherwise everything on the bench just explodes. So here we go. That is installed. And we'll flip this guy over. Alright. And it's going to be a little more tricky to get installed, but I think we can get it. Same thing. Make sure everything is well lubricated. Make as much mess as possible, as always. Really. That key to making this go fairly smoothly is make sure everything is nice and slick. Alright, get that squared up in there as best you can. That is not square. There we go. And we don't need the extension anymore. And here we go. it is and that comes right on out of there and we've got two pinion bearings installed let's see if we can uh, get this uh, on the bench somehow in a vise so now that we've got everything installed in here that we need to we got it all cleaned up and whatnot lubricated we've got some lube on our bearings here we've got a crush sleeve and what we're gonna do is we're going to use this lift arm extension to hold our pinion up uh, and we're going to drop this case right on top of it because without a second person this is kind of a tricky operation there we go make sure we're more or less centered up on our holding tool down there, there we are Okay, that's good. Um, now we're going to drop our bearing in there. And that a nice dose of lube. All right, now we're going to use this old Dana 60 yoke, which is large enough to slip over the splines of this. And we're going to use a socket on top of there, which is large enough to fit there. And we can get our uh, outer pinion bearing where it needs to be. And after that, we can install our seal and we can put the yoke on that we actually are going to be using, which is this little brand new guy. Talk a bit more about that later. Um, and we can then proceed to get our preload set with crush sleep. Let's get this bearing driven onto the yoke or onto the pinion. I think that's about it. All right, now go on with our seal very carefully. See if we can do this without wrecking it. All right, pinion uh, seal installer tool. Nice old chunk of exhaust pipe here. So just wipe our seal down a little bit. And again, a little lube. Goes a long way in making things slide together much easier. We got that. Get that centered up as best we can. Let's make sure. Oh, see, I'm about to fall off our installer tool down here. Get 
that centered back up. Come on. There you go. All right. And something kind of like that. And we'll give her some wax and see if it'll go straight. And it's not. Go. And one more, just I didn't go nowhere. Alright. Let's lubricate our seal surface here. Like so can throw this little guy on there. Love taps. Okay, dokey. And now that we've got all this mess in one piece, we can get it back in our vise. So this is a little more stable. And we can attempt to set our bearing preload. And hopefully only need to do it once because I only have one crush sleeve. All right, now that we've got our diff more or less secured enough so it's not going to fall and break my foot. We've got our uh, pinion holder here and we've got to take up that slack right there by tightening the pinion nut to crush the crush sleeve. Now this is um, definitely a thing that you have to be very careful with. You need to sneak up on it essentially. All right, let's get this going. Hold on to our pinion. It does take some time. You gotta really, really hammer her home. Oop. Okay guys, so now that we've struggled with this pinion nut for entirely too long, we can take our first pinion preload measurement and we're going to be using this dial indicator type uh, torque wrench that essentially we're going to be measuring the rotational torque in inch pounds. We can set our dial to zero on the top there and let's see. We are looking for while turning this 14 to 19 inch pounds on this gauge. Now it's pretty hard to see. Oh wow, that is hot, 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 hot. All right, we can touch the wrench again. All right, let's, okay, see you guys, we've got maybe like two. We've still got more to go. Alright guys, that's it. 15 to 19. Feels pretty good to me. You know, we'll be fine. It's junkyard gear set. So, that's good. Let's move on to setting up backlash on the ring and pinion. Well, the pinion was not bent. We've got nice, smooth rotation now. Well, our theory on the dust shield rubbing the housing last week was was correct. So <clears throat> now that we know all that, let's go ahead and see about getting carrier in here and getting our backlash set. All right, and in she goes. This is the tricky part, guys. Let me get those gears meshed. Bearing races kind of sort of where they need to be. All right, let's get this bearing cap in place first. 
if we can get a bolt started. There we go. There we go. We'll get these kind of set down in place. Those will torque to 90 foot pounds a little bit later. Get that race down where it's supposed to be. It's close enough for what we're doing here. Get this bearing cap on. Just snug. All right. You started. There we go. So, I don't really trust my current vice setup for the final adjustment procedure on the side uh, side washer, so let's figure something else out. We are kind of sort of generally in the ballpark now. We don't have anything torqued yet, we're just going to do some preliminary measurements here. Alright, there's our zero. Roughly 15 thou. Um, we can go ahead and tighten up side adjusters a little bit more, I think. Uh, let's bring the ring gear in just a touch closer and we'll tighten it up a little here. All right, that's pretty close to how snug we probably want it to be. Let's check this again. 12, 13 thou there. Um, let's go ahead and get a little bit more on this side. That's about as tight as we want it. Let's do the same over here. Get it nice and tight. All right, that's pretty good. That's about. 10 thou. That's on the loose side for a new gear set. However, this is a used gear set. And we really don't want to be too tight. Um, as we know, last time we checked this, it had virtually none. And, um, yeah. I don't know. It's getting hot. <laughs> uh, my brain is there's three. Okay, we're like maybe 12 or 13, give or take. Give or take a couple of thou. But that's good for a used gear set. We're gonna put some marking compound on it just, you know, so you guys can actually see it, but in the end it really doesn't matter. It's a used gear set. We just need backlash in the realm of normal um, so it doesn't burn up. Not immediately at least. So let's put some gear marking compound on it and see what happens. Alright, everyone's favorite part of setting up gears. And that is getting some of this grease on here. Now again, used gear set, so we pretty much just kind of get what we get here, guys. But we want to see just how terrible it is, right? Well, you know. Alright, so we've got some of that on there. Uh, my preferred method here is once you get about four teeth inside and outside, you're going to take a wrench on one of your ring gear bolts here, which has had plenty of time to dry and it's not going to work. You know why? Because our pinion turns with the vise. So, I don't know, we'll just, uh, I guess, uh, turn, turn the center chunk until we get the gear comp marking compound down into the pinion, huh? <laughs> it might work. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we're kind of down in there. Well, let's 
see if we got anything there at all. Oh, yeah. We did. I'll get that turned around so we all can see it, I think. Yeah. Alright. So, we are not too bad, but not too good. I believe we need to be a little deeper. So, we're going to take up some of that backlash that we said was good at 12. And let's bring it down to like 8 to 10. And we'll uh, reevaluate that. So, we want to take some out of it. So, let's find our adjuster tool again. Uh, we want to go. We want now. We want to bring some more in. So we're going to back this side off and snug this side up a little. And see where we end up. All right. Close enough. Let's see uh, what we got. Hmm. Way too much. Still too much. So let's back this side off now. Mm -hmm. That definitely was tight. And we tighten this side. So that's exactly basically ten thou. Let's uh Really crank down on this. Let's see if we can get it down to around nine. <clears throat> and recheck torque on this side. Which that is good. That's about nine. Let's um, check our pattern one more time and see if it's a little deeper. And you can usually just kind of respread your stuff here. Yep, arts and crafts time. All right, that's good enough. Let's play the spinny game again. Down you go. Getting close. All right, we're in the marking compound now. Let's. Alright, let's see what our marks look like now. Okay. Alright, we are definitely a little bit deeper. That's good. Yeah, I like that. We're not running up off the top of the gear. And we're not too deep inside of it, I don't think. You want to do this check for both sides. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but I think it'll run, and I think we're going to call it there. Um, so we can definitely, since we know it's definitely real, real close, let's uh, snug up the ring gear side one more time, real good with our wrench here. Double check the pinion side, and then we can torque the caps, and we'll check it one more time. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Cap bolts, 90 foot pounds. Torque these to 90 foot pounds. Hmm. And again, we are got ourselves in a bind. Oh well. We gotta hold this somehow. This is oh yeah, 90s. 90s a pull. There we go. There we go. Alright, come on. There we go. And one more. 
Okay, that is tight. Let us double check our gear pattern one more time. And we'll call it good. That looks pretty good. One more check -a -rooney. I like it. Not too deep, not too shallow. It's a used gear set. We can only really do what we can do with it. So, I think that's pretty much about it. Well, Duddy's got to put it back in his car, of course, but, you know, he'll do that the week before we have to go to Sykeston, I'm sure. And, uh, but my work here is done. Alrighty, guys, that does it for today. It is 105 degrees in the shop currently. We got this set up for Duddy, though. We uh, settled on about 9,000 backlash on the ring and pinion. Our pinion is not bent, which is good. And I think this 50-year-old gear set has another chance for life in the old 69 dart. So, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe, like and share. Go check out Duddy. He's got a car to put together. I do too. Wiring's getting pretty close, guys. It's a, it's a rat's nest. There'll be an update on that next week, though. So, we'll see you next time.